Clean renewable energy. It's one of the keys to solving global climate issues. And the solution might be one of humanity's oldest technologies, fermentation. While many look to ethanol, a fuel made by fermenting corn and other feedstocks, as one renewable energy source, corporations are racing to develop a new version using the corn plant's unused stalks, leaves, and cobs. But a young man working in a high school chemistry lab in Aurora, Illinois, may be ahead of them all. Here's the story. Nevada, Iowa, the heart of America's Corn Belt. DuPont is celebrating the opening of their newest achievement, a cellulosic ethanol plant. As most of you know, this facility is unique in that it turns the leaves, stalks, and cobs left over after the corn harvest into cellulosic ethanol, a clean, homegrown, and totally renewable fuel. Ethanol is a fuel made by harnessing the power of one of humanity's oldest technologies, fermentation. Most ethanol in the United States is produced by fermenting the sugar or glucose locked in the starch found in corn kernels. The process is similar to the one used to create alcoholic drinks. Cellulosic ethanol plants are the future of the ethanol industry, and the future of cellulosic ethanol may have been discovered 300 miles away in Aurora, Illinois. Chemistry to me is something that's very relaxing. So like just doing like, for example, like thermochemical equations and like understanding like how much is this going to heat up or like understanding like rates of reactions and like imagining like the different processes that work out. Tavis Reed is a 17-year-old high school senior at the elite Illinois Math and Science Academy. One of his school research projects unexpectedly took him down the same path as DuPont to cellulosic ethanol. I didn't really like know anything about ethanol before I talked to uh, one of my professors about what's a good project to do in biology that would be like simple for a sophomore to do and he suggested ethanol. Growing corn to produce ethanol is hard on the environment. It requires millions of acres of land and oceans of water and chemical fertilizers. Creating ethanol from the leftover stalks, leaves, and cobs of the corn plant, called stover, reduces ethanol's environmental footprint. But this tough, fibrous material is not easy to process. It's more difficult to make those sugars from biomass than it is to make them from starch. You and I make sugar from starch all the time. We eat too many donuts or, or, or whatever, too much starch, but we can convert that starch to sugar very readily. Now, converting biomass to sugar is a lot more difficult. That's why a cow has four stomachs and you know, needs to take a little break once in a while and chew things twice. And so that's kind of what happens here. This is sort of the equivalent of that cow where things are processed a little bit more intensely. DuPont's cellulosic fermentation process relies on ammonia to break the stover down and speed up the fermentation process. Tavis also looked to nature and found an innovative way of solving the problem. I was reminded by a video I had watched in freshman biology where these two organisms, a fish and a shrimp, work together in a, what's called a symbiotic relationship to improve the quality of life for both of them. I was able to find two bacteria that could both live together and one was able to break down cellulose into glucose and the other one was able to ferment that glucose into ethanol at a high rate. I was able to work to create this process that reduced the cost of creating ethanol by 85%, decreased land usage by 87%, and increase profits by 891 percent. You could use your grass in your front lawn, you could use the leaves that falls from trees, you can use anything that's already available in our like modern environments and our current farms. The construction of a cellulosic ethanol plant like DuPont's is driven by the quest for a source of clean renewable energy. We're at heart a science company and this is an application of science. This is another opportunity to take our science and apply it to the world's pressing problems. The need to feed people, the need to provide people with more energy that's sustainable and to protect them. You can start to see like climate change happening a lot more. It's a lot more vivid now. Like you see like the polar ice caps melting or other problems in the environment, like extreme weather. To know that I didn't do anything to stop that, I had to live with that. The construction of DuPont's cellulosic ethanol plant took several years and cost $225 million. Tavis doesn't have a fraction of that budget, but his research is already showing results. I entered my project into the competition called Afro-Cultural Technological Scientific Olympics of the Mind, or AXO for short. And so that's a local and a national competition. 
I won gold locally for my work my junior year, and then nationally I competed just this past summer and won the national gold medal for my research. Tavis's cellulosic ethanol process is still experimental, but it may soon be something that's happening on a huge scale. I do have my provisional patent and I'm working on getting my full patent. I don't have a whole bunch of funding or like a whole bunch of lab space, but right now I'm trying to stick at the things that I know I can solve, so I'm not just sitting here in the lab like making small progress on a bigger um, subject, but making uh, big progress in a smaller subject. And that's like really excites me. That's why I like picked clean energy as my, my field of research, because I really want to make sure that when I'm done, my processes help the earth, they didn't harm the earth.